Hey everyone, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. But Wellens, we already finished the game last video. Why are we back here again? Well, I am glad you asked. Today we're gonna be looking into an alternate ending that we could get at the <laughs> at the very end. I don't know if there is like an official name for it, but apparently it's called the fulfilling or good ending, I guess. Um, I'm told that this is not anything super major, so don't go expecting this is gonna be something insane. Basically, if we want to get this ending, what we have to do is see all the cutscene art before the game ends. So I figured, hey, since there's a whole bunch of cutscenes we haven't seen in my first playthrough, I'm gonna go through them again today so we can see it, and um, that'll be that. Obviously, if we've seen it already, I'm not gonna show it again, but um, yeah. Because all the cutscenes happened before the thing with Sayori, this is actually legitimately just going to be me playing a dating sim. <laughs> there's no way around it. So I'm gonna probably start with Natsuki's cutscenes here because I feel like out of everybody, we didn't really get to know her, especially later on when the, you know, when Yuri takes over a little bit. So yeah, let's start with that. This time I also have the game files window open and I have it on a separate monitor here just to look at what changes because apparently while we're playing, stuff gets added and deleted here. I'm gonna be keeping an eye out on this and we'll continue playing the game like that. All right. Ugh. I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her, in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot! What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Is it her manga collection? <laughs> Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga? You read manga, right? Ugh... Sometimes? Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. <laughs> you got that right. How did you know anyway? Cause you mentioned it earlier? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, <sighs> much better! Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Wellens. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ugh. I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire, striking animated feminine poses. Oh. It's exceedingly moe. Wow, they didn't even bother thinking of an actual English word for that. <laughs> Don't just stand there! Ugh! Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? You know, with your back pain and all? <laughs> I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Ah, we're reading it together. Uh, why's that? One copy. Ah, I, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. <gasps> Don't just say that! You'll make me feel weird about it! Natsuki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. 
Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her, either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? While well, you're distracting me! Uh... I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. <laughs> Sounds a lot like what Doki Doki is in the beginning. I kind of grew out of these, since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So... What should I expect from this? Is there going to be plot? Well, obviously! You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? Eh, you kind of look like you would. If we judge you by your cover. I mean... Well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like when they all get into their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen. <laughs> Sounds like Doki Doki Literature Club! That's really what makes it so good. You know, speaking of the drama... <laughs> I've always sort of avoided playing dating sims because I never thought that pure romance stories were my thing. But after playing Doki Doki, even the beginning parts, um, the part where Sayori found us and then like Natsuki was kissing us, it sort of made me realize that probably another reason why I don't play dating sims is because I don't want to get invested in it. Because to be honest, I was actually invested in the whole relationship drama that we had going on with Sayori and Natsuki last time. <laughs> there are so many touching parts. Huh, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. Heh? <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Ugh! <laughs> Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't yet seen you at your full power. Heh, <laughs> good save. Huh. <laughs> this chapter seems like it's about baking. Oh! This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Oh! Is that why Natsuki started baking? Well... Natsuki pauses for a moment, as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah... What does that matter? It doesn't, I was just curious. Oh, I think so. Since you enjoy baking too, right? Uh, that's... Just a coincidence! It's not. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like, I would ever get into anything because it's in a manga. Oh, it's okay, Natsuki. It's... There's nothing wrong with that. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Parfait girls. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Yeah, productive too, and delicious. Not to mention, she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Ah! We read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read? Well... Aw, oh, but you're reading something she likes, though. So, if we read with Yuri, at least she's trying to read with us at the same time, but Natsuki's just sort of, like, staring at us. <laughs> I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. Yeah. Unless if it's a boy. <laughs> I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? Hmm? You don't? 
Um... What? Do you have no friends too? That's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. Oh, I just noticed this, but she has a... She has a canine tooth, a yaiba. It's like one of those anime girl traits that make her cuter. Because... anime? <laughs> what do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Oh, sorry. Hmm. <laughs> like, I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like... Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ha! Huh, I know those kinds of people. Oh, you shouldn't be friends with them. It's okay to not like what your friends like, but you can't put it down, come on. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also in it. I'm already kind of a loser. <laughs> I'm glad you realize. So I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. <laughs> are you saying that Natsuki is a loser too? But it's probably harder for someone like you. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? The part about you being a loser, of course. I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Ah, okay, so maybe that's what Natsuki meant when she said that she felt Monica didn't respect her, cuz... Monica probably looks down on Manga too, just like Yuri. Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? <sighs> yeah? So? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough! Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Ugh. I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Aww, that's really cute. When someone's excitedly talking about things they like, that's always cute. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Natsuki for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile a little to myself. Ah, that's... that's cute. Okay, everyone! Huh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Oh, come on! Could your timing be any worse? Sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there, huh? Huh? Ah! Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gone to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. <laughs> Alright, guess I'll stop here for now. Aww. Well, it's nice to see that Natsuki's not always so bossy. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Oh, uh, yeah, but... Monica just said... Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Huh? Is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. <laughs> well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. By tomorrow? I only got partway through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. Well, since Natsuki asked you to, you gotta do it. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice 
in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face? Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. Alright, here we go. It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first volume of Parfait Girls out of my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands, then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I'm not so sure. I handle manga all the time, you know? I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. But I bet you're happy about it. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Slave driver! Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So, you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Oh, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found... Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Did she mess up her stuff again? Huh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Ah, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet. Oh yeah, that's right. This is an actual classroom. It's not just a club room. <laughs> so I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still there. I just had to organize it a bit. Ah. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. All right, time to show off my my boyish tall height. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez, this is so inconvenient. I'm moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Oh, <laughs> Natsuki. There is a stool on the wall there. Oh, come on! You should get it for her! In the closet, there is a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand it to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs a stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? I mean... <laughs> I knew it! Well, you know what? Just watch me! Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Oh, that might actually work in my favor. <sighs> Careful. I know what I'm doing! Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. Natsuki has a bit of a inferiority complex. I don't blame her. Nobody around her seems to take her seriously. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki is being stubborn as usual. Ugh. Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Yeah! The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. What are you doing, Wellens? Go help! The stool wobbles. Ah! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez! No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it! I don't want your help, okay? Uh, I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Aha! Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Ah... Uh, it's a little dangerous, since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Ugh. 
Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. There's a cutscene. Aha! There we go! See? I can easily do it now! Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Wah! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it that told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. <gasps> I can... I can almost see up her skirt? Oh, come on, man. Is the chair that high, though? Because that seems like... That seems like the chair would be pretty high if you could see that. <clears throat> I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Ha! <laughs> Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl's box set, easily the largest one on the shelf. Ah, heavy. Hey, Wellens. I I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry and take this one. Huh? But then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. All right. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. Oh, you were bending down. Okay. What do you mean stand up? Uh-oh. <laughs> Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh? Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the box! What are you looking at? Ah! You're trying to look at my... 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 Natsuki's legs shake. I I'm not! I was just... Natsuki, don't try to move! Just give me the box! You... you perv! You set me up! Go away! Get out! But... I'll do it myself! Uh, uh. The chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Yeah! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. Oh no! I got you! Aw, this is actually pretty cute, and pretty comedic too. I like it. The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground, and we get this going on. No cutscene for this? A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Ugh. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. <laughs> Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. Ugh. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Eh? Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Uh, uh, gross! Gross! Ah! A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko! Everything okay over there? No! Not really! I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Ah! Uh... Jeez! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. I didn't. Somehow, it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. Don't worry, she understands. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. It looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! My... My... 
Huh? I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. Oh no, are there folds on them? Oh no! There's a large diagonal crease along the page she's desperately trying to smooth out. Oh, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. <laughs> Natsuki, are you... No! Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Oh, It's her favorite manga, so... Oh, yeah, that does really suck. Ah, uh, I'll help get the crease out, okay? Maybe it's better to buy a new one altogether. It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No. I don't even care that much. I'm just... Having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's... It's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... Every day... Is... So hard. Mmm. So in my first playthrough, I don't think we ever really got many hints of what Natsuki's really struggling with. We know something about her dad being strict, but that was pretty much it. So maybe this is where we find out. I just want to... come to the club and... <gasps> Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah. I pick up volume 2 of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This'll help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Huh? That sounds really strange, coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well... I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? <laughs> Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us, as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright! That should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. Yeah, I feel like for someone like Natsuki, well, of course the whole Zundere thing is, um, it's like, just a personality stereotype. But seeing something like this, her saying that she's just really having a rough time, if you look at her being all angry all the time because of that, then suddenly, I feel like it becomes clear that she's only so angry because she's using that anger as a defense mechanism. Beneath the harsh exterior, she's probably a really nice girl. A really nice, gentle, kind-hearted girl. Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Natsuki's holding the volume one set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist. Aww. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. 
Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Aw, that was actually really sweet. I enjoyed that. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? Heh <laughs> Told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Ah, Yuri's making tea again. I don't know about this. Nothing bad's gonna happen here, right? So we've actually seen this cutscene already. We have, yeah. This is the one where we feed her chocolate. But um, it kind of ended off horribly because we saw that cutscene during the the jump scary parts. What the hell? Wait, what did she say? Yeah, Yuri just was gonna make some tea. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? <laughs> Says Monica. Shut up, Monica. Mind your own business. <laughs> Wait, why is Yuri so assertive here? I thought she wasn't supposed to be like this until later on. Or do you want to tell me that there's something wrong with helping involve Wellens in club activities? Eh? <gasps> My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Huh. <sighs> then let's go, Wellens. <laughs> Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Whoa! <laughs> what the heck? Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri! I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Yeah, Monica. So what if getting water, making tea as a one-person job? So what? You're just jealous. Wellens, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, oh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Wellens, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway... Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Oh, so it's a very normal tea-making session. Yes. Wellens, do you like oolong tea? I think we've seen this before. Yes. Kettle to 200 degrees, get the teapot, do it properly. Be all nice and elegant and fancy. Even though Wellens is an uncultured, savage beast who doesn't understand tea anyway. Yuri starts humming because she's in a good mood. Ah. Yeah, we've seen this. Ah, she decides that she would try expressing herself a little bit more. Hmm. Okay, so actually, since I didn't see this the first time around, it's hard to tell what was there originally and what wasn't. But now looking at it like that, so Yuri trying to express herself, that's actually not because of the interference of Monica. Good to know that. Aww, that's sweet. Okay, let's get to the chocolate-eating part. 
Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. Yeah, first time I saw this, didn't really get what it meant, but I'm pretty sure he means, oh, she's too cute. <laughs> Yuri pours a cup of tea. We sit on the floor. Back pain. Don't ask about it. Reading posture. <laughs> Mostly, I just want to see how the chocolate scene ends, because the first time we saw it, it ended horribly. <laughs> it ended with Yuri suddenly freaking out and grabbing me and like, I don't know, the whole thing turned kind of creepy. So if we get here... Mm. Yeah, she ate it. Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Helen's... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... Well... You were just... Helping... That's something that... Friends do... Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah... That's all it was. Yeah... Then... You don't need to stop or anything. Keep feeding me chocolate, Wellens! I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. What the heck are you guys doing in the club? This is school, you know? Keep it PG-13, please. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wait, I didn't expect it to end like this. Oh my god, Monica! Monica, you you just ruined a good thing. Okay, everyone. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. <laughs> well, let's, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. It's like Monica not so subtly interfering with our love life. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. <laughs> Cute. Okay, well, we haven't been with Yuri for the festival prep, so we're gonna go with her this time. Yeah. I'm gonna skip this part pretty quickly, because I really just want to see the cutscene. Oh, did I give her my phone number? Okay. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Yeah? Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. Ooh, interesting. At least you or um at least Natsuki told us that it's because of her dad, but Yuri Actually, we don't know the the family situations of any of these girls besides Natsuki. And even Natsuki, all we know is that she has a dad. But well, everybody has a dad. <laughs> yeah. Just got to clean my room up. I'm not really as creative as you are. Hopefully I can be helpful. As I approach my house after seeing Sayori, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah! Of course she came early. Thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? Probably. 
And there you go, Yuri wearing casual clothing too. She's got a, a nice turtleneck accentuating her uh, figure. <laughs> no, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. Call, call! Guys, just because you're high school students, you gotta use the phone like a phone too, okay? Especially if it's time pressed. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. I have no idea what we're doing with Yuri today. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least, I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room?! Not even your kitchen, your room! Okay, well, that is, uh, oh, okay. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I clean it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Oh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. No, you don't understand. There are things in my room I don't want you to see. Ugh. That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! I snatch Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Hey, Yuri, for someone who's so shy, you should be a little bit more polite. Come on, that's rude. Ah, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Ah, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. <laughs> That's the most vague thing I've ever heard. A atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you plan on taking it that far. Okay, to be honest, just listening to what they have planned for the festival, they have poem recitals, cupcakes, cupcakes are good, poem recitals I think are a little bit too... I don't think that's actually gonna attract anybody. And then, aromatherapy candles? <laughs> I don't think, even if the festival happened, it would've done us any good in terms of getting new members. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although, Many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. You know what would be even more effective? If all the girls here just dressed up in a maid cafe uniform or something and just be like, Welcome home, master! Just do a maid cafe! Literature club, maid cafe. When? It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah! Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. Wooden cylinder-shaped object? <laughs> I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. <laughs> are we... are we setting up a haunted house? <laughs> I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? <laughs> Not familiar at all. Oh, is that so? 
It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Guessing you have a lot of it at home? Depending on the oils or herbs you use, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. Did she press the romance switch? In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. That sounds like a conspiracy. Don't you think that'll be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Atmosphere? Well... Did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. A hundred? Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then, we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? So you're gonna make a ribbon curtain? And you're gonna block off the windows with black paper? And you're gonna have aromatherapy candles? I'm not sure how much Yuri has thought about this as a complete picture here. <laughs> it would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. No, that's actually... I don't think that would happen because if you block the door, if you block people's point of view, it's very unlikely that they would want to open it to peek inside. Whereas, if the view is open, if they can just look inside directly, that's much more inviting. I can't trust Yuri's marketing skills, okay? Sayori's the only one who knows what she's doing here. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Oh, <laughs> Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? It's because she turned on that aromatherapy too, the vapor. Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Wellens. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Oh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I feel like normally, like, if you invite someone to your house for the first time, would you really have them in your room? They would probably be in the living room. God damn. Wellens, you hasty boy. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then, she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Huh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is a gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. Oh... It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise me you won't be weirded out... Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Uh-oh. They're just... so pretty. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Ugh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. 
It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. Ah, so this was one of the, the hints before the actual reveal. Hmm. Knife collection? I guess that is a bit of a... Not the most common hobby. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> I don't think she likes being told that over and over again, Wellens. Seriously. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife, with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the points of the knife with my index finger, and you get cut like an idiot! Oh god! Ow! Oh! Wellens! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp! I barely touched it at all! It's my fault! I should have warned you! This knife is extremely sharp! It can cut through skin like it's paper! Uh, that's another really telling hint. Oh no! A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah! She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah! Oh my... Yuri! What if I have AIDS? What if I have diseases? Don't do this, okay? Don't! Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Holy jeez! Oh, that is... Oh, it's getting spicy in here. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri. Oh, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, sure, it was a little weird, and it took me by surprise. It probably turned Wellens on. <laughs> but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. What? <laughs> wow, okay. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. This is not even... You guys are jumping so fast. Whoa, this is way more intense than the Natsuki cupcake date. Wellens, did you really just do that? <laughs> now we're even. <laughs> Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong, because you did. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. Whoa, this one feels like a like it's the entrance to the 18 plus stuff. You're so weird, Wellens. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Hey, that's like saying you think she's weird. Don't you like her? You can't say that. You can't think that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh... I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great! Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri! Ah, thanks! It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it! What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. 
That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, oh, that's right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. <laughs> Isn't that a little crazy? Do we know how to do that? Painting? Watercolor? We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water... I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in. Whoa. My god. That... Here? How could she clean it up that quickly? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Oh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So... I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint the gradient across the banner. That's... that's a huge undertaking! Starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Wouldn't it be easier to buy paper like that, rather than covering the entire background with watercolor? Seriously questioning Yuri's ideas here. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. You're not gonna write Literature Club? We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Oh, neat. What are you gonna write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah! Sorry! Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Uh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Oh my god. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back in front of her. Whoa! Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah. Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but she holds onto your arm. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait! Huh? 
just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah, uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she is lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What's happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzying feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers, wrapped around my wrist, sent a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Where is the fire alarm? Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you gonna add the lettering now? Ah, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well... Perhaps it would be best to leave it here than have you bring it in in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Oh, does that mean that we never get to find out what actually... Yeah, what the thing was? Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Who? Heh <laughs> You say that like you're glad it's over. I am glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Oh no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah. So you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Have dinner here. We can go have dinner together. Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. There is no way... There is no way in reality where two high school students who like each other and they're alone in a house in the guy's room, there's no way nothing would happen, okay? This is ridiculous. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then... Yuri fidgets. I guess... I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have much time as we wanted. Because we can do it again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Uh, I forgot that you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Wellens. Is she gonna kiss me too? Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kinda like that about you. Well... How am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. 
Sayori? Ah. Mm, so now that we have gone through a few routes, we can get a clearer perspective on the whole thing now. It's really weird because it almost feels like they don't really expect you to like Sayori. No matter what you do, you'll always have to invite Yuri or Natsuki over and you're always gonna have some additional development with them that makes Sayori sad. When I first played it through, the whole thing about Sayori feeling off and then going to her house to check up on her, I thought we were already in Sayori's route when we were doing that. Which made it really confusing because I was like, why the heck is the, the guy still flirting with Natsuki after entering Sayori's route? That's so weird, it makes no sense. But now seeing this, like I see what they're doing, but I think you get a completely different impression of the game, especially the first half, based off which girl you pursue. Because if you liked Sayori, if you like Sayori versus if you like Yuri or Natsuki, you see the game a little bit differently. Huh? Ah. Okay, this is just... No, we don't need this, okay? Hi, Sayori. Well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. All right! Last but not least, we gotta go with Sayori. I wanna see the Sayori cutscene, right now. Wellens, Wellens! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from another classroom. Want to come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up? Me and Monica, we're gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons, markers, and glue sticks. Oh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Wellens to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. No, Monica, get out of here. Oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Heh, <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. Oh. So if you look at this, knowing what happens later on, I guess Monica has been holding it in for really, really long. Here, she was still pretty... She's not pushy at all here. Just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Wellens? Yeah, let's go. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Hey, stop being so condescending. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yup. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well... Everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. That honestly doesn't sound like something that high school students would be interested in. Oh... That sounds... kinda dull? <laughs> Wellens, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about getting to see cute girls. It's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem, like... Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots. Caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie? I'm working super hard on this, you know? <laughs> I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Oh, I probably read it wrong then. Should have been more solemn. 
Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm so excited! The festival is going to be so much fun! Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Wellens, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission! <laughs> the mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. Oh, because you're so grown up! As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So, going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. That's nice, once in a while. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too! Crayola? <laughs> of course! None of that off-brand, what is it, Laurentian? None of that Laurentian shit. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. <laughs> yeah! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. You need, a, you need someone to kiss your boo-boo? <laughs> Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. Oh. My goodness. <laughs> you have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Oh. That's not Crayola. That's bullshit. <laughs> Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Wow, I didn't even realize until this cutscene, but Sayori looks like she would have back pain too. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Oh no! Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Well, ends. Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to! I'm fine with looking like a unicorn! Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. Aww. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? O okay. Aww. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. Oh, how considerate of you. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. All this started because of a box of crayons, oh my god. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. You can get a bottle from a vending machine, not a can. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Hey! Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot! Ah! Sorry, I forgot! <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her forehead. It stings! Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Wellens? This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Huh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. 
Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing onto the things you did. But sometimes, when I try to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it wasn't really your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah. You don't remember? Mm, Wallens, remember! Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So, in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Wellens, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. Oh, Sayori, she always sees the good in other people. You're really a sweetheart. S don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Wellens, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Oh, I wish. I wish, Sayori. Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see her forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ugh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Oh. This was a short one! Hey, why is Sayori's cutscene so short? I demand a refund. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the classroom. Ah, you're back! Good timing! I was just about ready to start sharing our poems. Eh? Sayori, your forehead... She's fine, don't worry about... I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shell! <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway... <laughs> Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right! Eh? We forgot about it! Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all of the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. Heh <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Wellens. Oh, well, Sayori... I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. <laughs> it's okay, we all understand. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone! Are you ready to share your poems? And I guess that is the last cutscene we have here. Mm. Now all we gotta do is go confess to Sayori, get the last cutscene, and then we can blaze past everything all the way until the end, where we're gonna find a different ending. Okay. I think about now, the files are going to start 
doing something, so I'm looking at my other monitor right now, looking at the folder. Oh, it's a new day, right? Something just came up in the folder here. Hold on. Happy thoughts. Okay, well that's... That's not scary at all. I guess that's Sayori with the bow. So this happens at the end of the day and we're back to Monica. Okay. So here in the background, as soon as it's done playing, it shows... Yep, something new just popped up again. An exception has occurred. File game script chapter 5 RPY, line 307. Traceback.txt. I'm sorry, but an uncaught exception occurred. Restart top context. Oh, geez. I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a sec. I can probably fix this, I think. Actually, you know what? This would probably be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. Heh <laughs> Well, here goes nothing. And that's... That's Monica. This is not even... She's like an outright villain here. Ah, uh, it'll be easier if we just delete her. Whatever. Whatever. Same thing again. Yeah. Alright. Oh! A new day! And something just popped up! Can you hear me? .txt There is a little devil inside all of us. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality, is a writhing, twisted mess of dread. Loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt. All thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host, seeping through every little crevice they can find into their willpower, starving them of all motivation and desire, into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food, or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable tangled mess is already present in every one of them. That's why I choose not to blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knot. Hmm, so I guess this is Monica talking about... Yeah, newly opened gash in their skin, that's an obvious one. She's trying to justify everything to herself. There's a little devil inside all of us. Was that something that Yuri said beforehand? I think so? Or was it Monica? Can you hear me? Basically, she's like, I didn't do anything wrong, it's not my fault. <laughs> oh. So they come up at the beginning of every day, it seems. I, 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 I. I hate this. I can't do anything, nothing. No matter how many times you play, it's all the same. It would be really, really easy to kill myself right now, but that would mean I don't get to talk to you anymore. All I want is for you to hate them. Why is that so hard? Hmm. When we actually just play the game, we learn very, very, very little of Monica, but here, you do get a little bit, like a little bit more, a little bit more. She's really not feeling so good here. Oh! Oh, I think this was, uh, right when Monica said she was giggling and she left. Hey, Wellens, Yuri is really something, isn't she? And the files just changed again. Have a nice weekend. Oh, this is not a text file. Can we open this or... Hold up. Oh, this must be some code. Yeah, I'm sure someone has figured it out online already, so I'm not gonna bother too much about it. Um, alright, it's not a text file. Moving on. No, oh, after the weekend's over, the have a good weekend file is gone. Alright, here we go, here we go. So the ending here should be different. We're starting without Monica, and we have nothing in games. Saved games, nothing. Ordinary school day. I'm guessing we can probably skip a little bit of this. It's only gonna change near the end. Yeah. Ah, I glance around the room. Girls. I look forward to working with you. Working? Wellens, don't tell me... Yes. Mm -hmm. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yeah. Cupcakes. I believe you. Tea and reading. Awesome. 
Manga in the club room. Oh, the whole cute thing with Natsuki and Yuri and the going to a bookstore together. Wonderful. Okay, there we go. Now we can't skip. We can't skip, so this is probably something new. Eh? Huh? I guess the meeting's over, right? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along. Isn't it? I think everyone likes you too, Wellens. You think so? Well, everyone always seems to get along a little better with you around, Sayori. Aw, Wellens? Don't say something like that, it's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was surprised when you told me you were starting a club. But I think you're pulling it off just fine. We're gonna make it the best club ever! Now that you joined, every day is gonna be so much fun. Hey, Wellens? I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is, I already knew you were going to. Heh <laughs> There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for spending so much time with us all. You worked so hard to make each and every one of us happy. Oh, she's talking about me going through all the cutscenes. You comforted us through our hard times. And you helped us all get along with each other. Do you get it, Wellens? <sighs> she doesn't bring up Monica at all here, so I wonder if she knows, but she's just not saying it, or does she really not know? No, never mind. Because I'm president now, I understand everything. You really didn't want to miss a single thing in this game, did you? You saved and loaded so many times just to make sure you could spend time with everyone. Only someone who truly cares about the literature club would go that far. Aww. I'm saying all, but she's talking about me. <laughs> but... All along, that's all I ever wanted. For everyone to be happy and care about each other. <laughs> it's kind of sad, you know? After all you've done for us, there isn't much I can do for you in return. We've already reached the end of the game. So... This is where we say goodbye. Thank you for playing Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm going to miss you, Wellens. Come visit sometime, okay? We'll always be here for you. Oh, this is actually kind of... <laughs> to have someone directly acknowledge my efforts in getting this ending. Okay, that is really something that nobody has ever done to me. <laughs> we... We all love you. Oh. And then it's like, Monica appears for no reason. <laughs> well... It's a nice little way to end it off. Can you hear me? They put a lot of effort into this whole thing here. <laughs> okay, we've already it's seen me. this, so I'm just gonna talk over it about whatever. Um, I sped through a lot of it, but from what I can see, there's actually a lot of variation, quite a bit of variations in the dialogue. Um, in my original first playthrough, I was pretty even in distributing attention to everybody. But when you focus on one girl, like in the poem reading parts, the girls get a lot more jealous being like, I know you like Yuri, but spend some time with me too, and like stuff like that. For the second part of the game with the scary stuff, I actually focused on Natsuki this time and I got some different scares too, so... I think some of it is randomized and then some of it is dependent on who you choose to appeal to with your poems. Although by the end anyway, Yuri's always like, spend time with me. Even though I picked to spend time with Natsuki, she just kind of forces her way through. I mean, yeah, I, I'm acknowledging that they put in a lot of effort here, because they did. By the second time around though, I don't think I even bat an eye towards any of it, so it was kind of like, oh, okay, this again. Just, um, it's a little gimmicky, I guess, is what I want to say about the jump scares. The game file changes on the other hand. Well, I guess they're kind of cool, but at the end of the day, also kind of gimmicky. They didn't really add anything groundbreaking. But I also know that apparently besides for those game files showing up, representing Monica's changes to the game, there's a lot of other little things that you can data mine in the game and find extra info about. And apparently if you look at all the stuff, you can look it up online. It's 
it's all over the place. It hints towards Team Salvato's next game that's coming out this year. Some people asked me if I'm gonna play it, and uh, I can't give a blanket yes because I don't know what kind of game it is. Like, I don't know if it's a visual novel or a 3D game or what. It seems like it's gonna be a horror game, which by itself is something that's hard for me to say yes to. I'm interested enough to keep an eye on it, but I can't... Yeah, I can't say that I'll, I'll play it for sure. Especially because I liked certain parts of Doki Doki, but not other parts so much. So in this new game here, apparently it's codenamed Project Libertina. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the name of the game or not, but yeah, that's what it's called for now. Um, it really depends on what sorts of elements from Doki Doki it takes into this new game, because... Well, to be frank, if it's the jump scare stuff, then that's significantly less interesting to me. Plus, I might not be able to play it, depending on how scary it actually is. So, um, yeah. Anyway, going back to Doki Doki again. The cutscenes that we went through this time, I really feel like there's a conspiracy against Sayori, man. Why was her cutscene so damn short? It was like 10 minutes compared to Yuri's half an hour in my room. What the heck was that? They were cute, although I think my favorite cutscene of the ones that we saw today here was probably... Natsuki's, because that one moment when the manga fell and then it had a crease on it and she just cried because she was saying, Oh, I'm just, I'm just having a really, really bad day today. I feel like that's something that we don't take into consideration often too. When people are more snappy and grumpy than usual, maybe it's just because they were having a bad day and they're not normally like this. But um, yeah, that's, that's something that's hard to remember to consider. Well, we made it through the end of the song, and none of our memories, the cutscenes, got deleted. But the game itself, it's still gotta go. To the special player who achieved this special ending. For years, I have been enamored by the ability of visual novels, and games in general, to tell stories in ways not possible, using traditional media. Doki Doki Literature Club is my love letter to that. Games are an interactive art. Some let you explore new worlds, some challenge your mind in broad new ways. Some make you feel like a hero or a friend. Even when life is hard on you. Some games are just plain fun, and that's okay too. Everyone likes different kinds of games. People who enjoy dating sims may have a heightened empathy for fictional characters, or they might be experiencing feelings that life has not been kind enough to offer them. Wow, that's a, that's a really kind way of putting it. If they are enjoying themselves, then that's all that matters. That goes for shooting games, casual games, sandbox games, anything. Preferences are preferences, and our differences are the reason we have a thriving video game industry. My own favorite games have always been the ones that challenge the status quo. Even if not a masterpiece, any game that attempts something widely different may earn a special place in my heart. Anything that further pushes the limitless bounds of interactive media. I extend my true gratitude to all those who have taken the time to achieve full completion. I hope you enjoyed playing it as much as I enjoyed making it. Whoa, that sounds a lot like what I say at the end of a series. <laughs> Thank you for being a part of my literature club. Love, Dan Salvato. Yeah, I think it's clear that no matter what you think about Doki Doki Literature Club, it's got a lot of heart. Yeah, they put a lot of love into it and it really shows. Although, if we really want to talk about novelty and video games here, I feel like a lot of the fourth wall breaking stuff has been done before, so... I would love to see if Team Salvato can do more with this concept in the future. Alright. Yeah, that's all I got for Doki Doki Literature Club, and thank you for making it to the end. Thank you for being a part of my literature club. And I'll see you all elsewhere. Bye! Oh, I can't play this shit, man. This is too stupid.